Alright, so today I decided to fire up my HHO unit. Haven't been in a while. This is a, a unit that I built according to some popular sort of trends, but two years ago. So there's been some improvements in the way things are being done by those whom I consider to be some of the leaders on YouTube, for example, Delvis11, Larry HHO Power. There's a few guys out there that, uh, with Delvis11 being particularly um, astute in this sort of technology. So there's things that I believe I should have done differently. Probably the number one thing that I should have done differently as you can see where I have my reservoir okay my water comes out gravity will have it that it comes down the electrolysis takes place in the dry cell your product comes out here and it comes up into the tank bubbles back through the tank comes out of the top into my safety bubbler so there's a there's a brass rod that runs down all the way to here this thing's full up to about here with just with just distilled water. So gas is produced, bubbles its way up, finds its way out, and then comes down, in this case, to my torch. Okay, well, for starters, the more connections you have, the more chance you have for leaks. And hydrogen will leak out of just about anything. For example, if you fill a balloon, you come back a couple days later the balloons deflated it'll find its way out anything now what I've discovered in my setup is that <clears throat> I lose a lot of hydrogen by the time it gets down to the business end I've actually lost quite a lot of my hydrogen throughout the setup and there's a couple things I don't like now I was what I was gonna say is the number one thing is, is there's nowhere to drain the system you see it has to be disassembled right which isn't a big deal right now because I'm only running 1% sodium hydroxide. Um, but when you get into higher concentrations of electrolyte, the handling of the electrolyte itself becomes an issue. And you want to have your system built. The other thing that should have been done is the whole thing should have been a little higher. Though. Like I should have used a bigger computer case. I should have used one of those old monsters from the 80s, a server case. Get everything a little higher. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the, the distance from here to here should be a bit more. Another six inches would be nice. Okay. I have too much horizontal travel of my gas. The other thing I'll never do again is I'll never re... And this was really popular. Everybody was doing it. The tanks they were selling and stuff. See how this comes out and it comes down and then it re-bubbles through the electrolyte before it goes through. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. From a safety point of view, it's actually pretty good. But the problem with it is is that your produced gas is re-interested... Re in it is reintroduced to sodium hydroxide. Now, after cycling through many times, you have less and less and less sodium hydroxide in here and, and more just water because you, you, your sodium ends up in here and becomes your catalyst so you just refill this with water is what I'm trying to say. You don't necessarily keep pumping new electrolyte at the system. But here's the thing. If you're running this shit into a little compact car, for example, that has an aluminum manifold, you, you end up with more electrolyte in your final product by rebubbling through your fuel tank. And that's the real problem because sodium hydroxide and aluminum don't play well together nor does potassium hydroxide and aluminum and um, you can burn out your manifold due to corrosion by your byproducts left in your fuel. The hydrogen and stuff is not going to... the oxygen and the hydrogen are going to create a problem in your motor but the electrolyte 
could possibly. The other thing I should have done was don't use ABS plastic, okay? Because when I took this apart today and I hadn't looked at the system for, you know, six or seven months, it has not run in six or seven months, it just stood the way it is with everything full. You get a gunge inside here and I don't have gunge anywhere else so I'm gonna blame this ABS plastic the other thing that's totally missing from here which is a real safety concern is that you see this bubbler it has no blowout now it's all fine and dandy to get a flashback I have I have a homemade protection here and homemade protection here but when I have a flashback there's nowhere for that pressure to go and it has happened to me before and I didn't crack this vessel but I'm actually kinda of surprised that I didn't it was probably because my water level was high enough that there was only so much combustible gas all it did was barf um, water out my torch basically now the number one way to not have that ever happen to you is when you're running your torch let's say you got it fired up you're running your torch don't shut down your system to turn off your torch turn off your torch momentarily with your ball valve and then open it up back right back again and then shut down your your electrolyzer because that's how I got my very first flashback and it's very easy to do you think oh well I'll shut the machine off I'll stop producing gas and that'll be my safest method but it's not because the flame travels right back through the system as the pressure decreases it can't keep a flame and way it goes now I have um, I have brass wool in there so I have brass wool in here um, as a first measure of uh, protection but my honest feeling is that even though I use very very fine brass wool I don't think it does shit okay um, if anything it scrubs electrolyte out of your flame maybe or something I don't know it, 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 I, I, I have no faith in that as a flashback arrestor whatsoever so my only flashback protection is a bubbler that doesn't have a blow off valve which is really pretty stupid don't don't make that same mistake now in my case I'm running this on such a minimal level that I know that the safety um, aspects of it I've had the problem occur and that vessel is strong enough that if I have a flashback it barfs back out the bottom line so I'm okay but that's only because I'm running 1% electrolyte right now now you can run up to 20% electrolyte um, and then you probably have you know the the strongest molar concentration electrolyte is you're gonna get is probably 20 I mean in theory it might be 30 but you're probably only gonna get between 20 and 30 percent now I run real low electrolyte because I'm trying to create a small flame for refrigeration but you know depending on what you're gonna do you're gonna run different concentrations now mine's controlled by a um, commercial product by Maxtronic it's a 35 amp PWM and I'm running a 25 amp fuse so that gives you some kind of indication I'm not gonna go into uh, gas production tests and everything I know where this thing sits and it's it's pretty low right now um, but that's kinda where I want it to because I kept melting my heat exchanger on my fridge as it were anyway um, so I'm not looking for huge production but when I tear this down it's gonna be a wholly different beast because I'm going to switch from 21 plates over to 50, between 58 and 63 and that will take me from 12 volts to the wall I'm going to build a 110 version following sort pretty much following the Delvis 11 line of thinking of course I built my own dry cell so it's it's a different story I mean you know he builds his a little differently than mine everybody builds theirs a little differently there's there's some things that you know that are pretty common practice nowadays that I didn't incorporate at the time because not necessarily everybody was doing it one of those is that you can see I have one port in or one port in down there sorry on the bottom and one port out it's more typical now to have two ports on either side so you have um, 
you don't force the gas to move across this this horizontal plane to come out you give it an opportunity to come out over here as well um, as well if you look at Larry HHO powers designs he's got some slots along the top of his plates and his plates are designed more they're, they're longer horizontally than they are tall and it's all about getting the bubbles off the plates faster in addition he's gone into um, using uh, all kinds of stuff check him out uh, HHO power spelled PWR I believe and Delvis 11 are, are the two guys that I watch really pretty closely there's others too that you'll see if you look at who's commenting on their page politely in other words they're friends those are generally pretty good guys too they that are worth checking out on their channels but yeah that's that's the system and uh, I'm just gonna do a few things I'm gonna build a couple crystal batteries and I'm gonna melt down my I'm gonna melt Epsom salt and actually if you see that rock over there in my pathway it's a very interesting rock when I melt it with HHO it turns into this sort of glass crystal that that I'm pretty interested in and I'm pretty interested in the electrical characteristics of this flame which not a lot of people talk about because you know they're worried about oh well, you know does it does it give you better gas mileage but I don't know I mean I'm getting into skeptical ground here but I can tell you that this flame has strange characteristics in that it will turn around and just dissolve certain things in no time yet if it has a an electrical relationship with something else that you try to to torch suddenly it won't work for example like you try to you try to heat water with this flame and it's pathetic yet you can turn around and get titanium glowing red hot you know now here's an example you try to you try to um, do some quick desoldering. Well, that was a couple of seconds worth of flame hitting that, and it's done almost nothing to the solder, but it instantly started to disintegrate the fiberglass. So it's it's really pretty interesting when it comes into a conductive material. Depending upon that material, it may or may not have the effect that that, that you initially thought it would. So. I'm going to fire up, that's just an RV power supply running at 30 amps. But I fire up my unit and I bring my PWM frequency and current limiting a duty cycle. I bring that up and you can see I start to get a little bit of production. I crank that right up and she starts to go. One of the other problems with bubbling through your 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 uh, tank is that you get a fair amount of electrolyte moving past the point where you'd where you'd want it to. You get foamy in here, which I don't like. But she right now the way it's set up with only like one percent sodium hydroxide, it that production you're looking at right there, I know it looks like a lot. But actually, when you get into this hobby, you realize that a lot is a very vague term. <laughs> that's probably right there. That's probably mm, 1.3 to 1.5 liters per minute. That's actually not that much gas. So when you see these little systems that put out um, pathetic little bubbles, they're, 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 they're putting out nothing. Like nothing and, and you know like this thing right here is running rather inefficiently in the sense that to get right now to get 1.3 liters per minute at well I know I'm under 25 amps because you know I'd be blowing that fuse if I weren't maybe 18 amps or something or something but you know the ultimate goal for brute force is if you can get a liter per minute for every 10 amps that you're burning at 12 volts then you know you're pretty much rocking at that point not gonna do a whole lot better than that you can see I'm getting some foaming up in the top eh? but make sure when you do this like I say keep your torch open there's always got to be somewhere for the gas to go you know so I'll see if I can fire this up Now 
Now it takes a while too for for it to uh, to build up some pressure in the system as well. But there you have it. Now you can see by the color of my flame that I still have quite a lot of electrolyte. And that was presenting some, some issues when I was running it in my diesel. Not too bad though because it's an older diesel. But uh, I stopped running it in my diesel for other reasons. Mainly my, my motor has already has 400,000 kilometers and 6.2 liter Chevy diesel. Which are, they're not known as a real strong rock to begin with. 90% of the people who tear down a 6.2 uh, basically decide that they're not going to rebuild it because of micro fissures and, and cracks in the block even though they thought they had a solid engine they don't and so when you run hydrogen in a block that is susceptible to cracking and micro fissures and you run hydrogen in there you're, you're cleaving those micro fissures and you're exploding them further and further apart so um, it's better suited for like a Cummins or something that's a little bit stronger and uh, so I stopped doing it because I was only getting 10 to 15 percent fuel economy improvement uh, which is decent you know like I mean don't get me wrong it was cool but you know if you ruin your motor at the same time because it's not well suited to HHO well then you know your return on investment there is is pretty pathetic right so yeah, I can't really do a whole lot of uh, demonstrating the use of the torch. You can see that on other videos, but I'm going to melt some rock today and make some crystal batteries. So uh, there you have it. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.